Welcome, pilots! This is the fourth video of a series where I'll take a deep dive into the suitability of tactical destroyers for running high security combat sites. The first video reviewed the ship attributes and tactical modes for each player faction's tactical destroyer. In this video, I'll be focusing on the Hikadi, the Galent's answer to tactical destroyers. My stated goal for this series was to find a single fit capable of running as many high security combat sites as efficiently as possible. On my website over at RileyEntertainment.com, I originally provided two theoretical fits for the Hakadi. The versatile sniper fit has a high scan resolution and warp speed, while the versatile tank fit sacrifices this for a much stronger active armor tank. The sniper fit has been slightly modified to improve its capacitor recharge a little, while the tank fit has been reworked to operate off a single armor repair, dropping the micro warp drive in the process. There are a handful of high security combat sites that give the sniper fit some trouble, fully overlapping with the sites that are equally difficult for the Confessor. I've also added two additional fits, which I'll discuss further when I review each fit later in the video. I found that the Hakadi fared a little better than the Confessor when facing heavy incoming damage. While the Hakadi does have fewer armor hit points, it makes up for this with more hull hit points. Its defense mode also provides its resist bonus to both armor and hull and the bonus to its armor repair rate allows it to power through otherwise scary situations. Before I dive into the sites that can be challenging, I'll discuss some of the fitting choices you'll likely be making flying a Hakadi. The main choice you'll be facing is whether to use high DPS blasters or high range railguns. Using the compare tool, let's have a look at the attributes for each Tech 2 small hybrid turret. Blasters are intended for in-your-face close-range combat, dealing extremely high DPS. Railguns have much higher range, but deal significantly less damage, have more of a draw on the ship's capacitor, and are generally a little harder to fit. Blasters can be fun, especially against some of the more difficult sites featuring faction NPCs with strong tanks. But I definitely find railguns to be the better choice for running combat sites, as there's no need to close range with every individual target in order to start applying damage. My recommended fits all feature 150mm railguns. If you are looking to try out blasters, I might recommend simply swapping the railguns in the tank fit with Tech 2 Neutron Blasters. With void ammo and my character's skills, this fit gets me over 550 DPS in defense mode or over 750 DPS in sharpshooter mode. Just keep in mind that any combat site with stasis towers will present quite the conundrum. I put together a chart showing the DPS, optimal range, tracking, and activation cost for each combination of railgun, ammunition type, and tactical mode. The numbers shown are based on my character's skills, which are nearly perfect for tactical destroyers. I've made this chart available over on the ship fitting section of my website at RileyEntertainment.com. With four mid-power slots, you have the option of trying to fit both a micro warp drive and afterburner. Having a micro warp drive gives you the ability to race towards a wreck in cases where you're in direct competition with another capsuleer. If you're not concerned with this, fitting only an afterburner puts much less draw on your power grid and capacitor. With high armor and hull hit points, and a bonus to both armor resistances and armor repair rate while in defense mode, the Hakadi is clearly meant to be armor tanked. At a minimum, you'll want a small armor repairer. Depending on the sites you plan to run, you have plenty of options to increase your armor resistances so that you can stay in sharpshooter mode as much as possible. The damage control module synergizes particularly well with the Hakadi's bonuses. The main challenges I faced came in the Angel and Sancha occupied mining colony sites, both being the DED rated 4 of 10s, along with the Angel, Blood, and Sancha Vigil. While I was able to complete both the Angel and Sancha 4 of 10 sites in the Sniper Fit, it was a tough slog that involved whittling down most of the other NPCs at range before engaging the mining foreman. The Tank Fit is much more efficient in these sites, though it can still feel a little scary when the mining foreman gets a good hit on you. Thankfully, I found that I was able to deal enough damage to break its tank even when in defense mode. Perhaps the most annoying feature in these occupied mining colony sites are the nearby structures, which may force you into manually piloting in order to avoid collisions. The Angel Vigil site is also a bit scary in the Hakadi, which I only attempted in the tank fit. I actually felt compelled to switch to a blingy A-type armor repairer for the second rune. 
The Sancha Vigil site is a bit scary in the first room, with all the light missile batteries. You'll probably want to enter the room in defense mode, and will definitely want to take out a good number of the light missile batteries before tackling the rest of the site. Another challenge in the first room comes when several elite cruisers spawn that hit you with some really extreme tracking disruptors, forcing you to engage at super close range. The second room of the Sancha Vigil site went a little more smoothly than I thought it might, with the spider drones being handled quite expeditiously by switching to antimatter charges. The Blood Vigil site is also a bit scary in the first room, as it has both light missile batteries and stasis towers. In the second room, I found the Hakati has enough DPS to take out the stasis towers before the EM fields run out of repair cycles. This actually makes the second room quite easy with the tank fit. So let's take a look at the four fits I've come up with for running combat sites in the Hakati. The first I've named Long Range Sniper, capable of running most high security combat sites with reasonable efficiency. The fit uses 150mm metal level 4 railguns and two magnetic field stabilizers, giving it about 310 DPS with antimatter charges at an optimal range of 15 kilometers. With iron charges, it reaches out to 50 kilometers with 130 DPS. It has both a micro warp drive and afterburner, giving you the option of both chasing down wrecks when in direct competition with another capsuleer, or speed tanking from a distance when facing a large number of NPCs. The armor tank consists of a small armor repair with two capacitor control circuit rigs that allow it to be cap stable in sharpshooter mode when running only the afterburner in the mid slots. The sensor booster and signal amplifier are there to improve your targeting speed in situations where you're competing with other capsuleers in some of the less difficult combat sites. Unfortunately, this fit is extremely tight, requiring a Tech 2 ancillary current router rig. If you're just shy on power grid, you'd have to replace the micro warp drive and or afterburner with a compact variation. Doing so would put a little extra pressure on the ship's capacitor. While I found I did have to be somewhat cautious, this fit was still quite capable in the Serpentis, Garistas, and Blood 4 of 10 sites. As mentioned earlier, the Angel and Sancha 4 of 10 sites are extremely difficult, requiring a lot of caution and patience. The Blood, Sancha, and Angel Vigil sites all have too much incoming damage for this fit. The long range tank fit gives up the extra targeting speed in favor of a much stronger active armor tank. If you're just training into tactical destroyers, or want to run the more difficult 4 of 10 sites more efficiently, I might recommend this fit over the sniper fit. This fit manages to maintain the same damage output, dropping the micro warp drive in order to improve the armor repair rate with 3 auxiliary nano pump rigs. The mid slots are filled with cap rechargers, making the fit fully cap stable even in defense mode. It also introduces a damage control for the extra resistances, which helps act as your savior in dangerous situations. The Angel tank fit is nearly identical, replacing the damage control with an explosive armor hardener. Once I'd run all combat sites at least once with each of the sniper and tank fits, I wanted to see if I could come up with a fit that includes Tech 2 railguns. The resulting fit remains untested, but combines some of the ideas from the sniper fit and tank fit together while simultaneously boosting its damage output in sharpshooter mode to 340 DPS with antimatter charges, or as high as 400 DPS with Tech 2 Javelin charges. I believe this more versatile fit should be able to freely roam anywhere in high security space, swapping out modules as needed for the more difficult 4 of 10 and Vigil sites. The sensor booster can be swapped out for a third cap recharger, and the signal amplifier can be swapped for either the damage control or explosive armor hardener. Like the tank fit, it drops the micro warp drive and includes three auxiliary nano pump rigs. It requires a slightly blingy Corelli C type armor repair to avoid going over on power grid. While flying the Hakati, I was impressed by how quickly it's able to dispatch NPCs in sharpshooter mode, and how well it's able to recover from incoming damage in defense mode. While it's not quite as easy going as the Jackdaw, I felt it was smoother than the Confessor. I can't stress enough how strong the defense mode is, having the armor repair bonus, and resist bonuses to both armor and hull. It is possible that my experience flying tactical destroyers has improved over the past month, which prompted me to go back to explore other potential confessor fits. And I may have come up with something. If it works out the way I hope it does, I'll produce a short video discussing the fit.
Prior to this, I released a video with a detailed discussion on fitting the Jackdaw. I'll be moving along to the final tactical destroyer next, the Spipple. I recently completed a 13-part series detailing all high-security Blood Raider combat sites. I'm planning on starting a similar guide for Sanchez Nation combat sites soon, and will likely begin releasing it around the same time as the video on the Spipple. You can find all of my EVE Online content in the gaming section of my website over at RileyEntertainment.com. So stay tuned to Riley Entertainment, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.